everybody's had the experience of trying to get into a busy elevator. What you haven't always had the experience of is a convenient set of stairs next door. So imagine wonderful, open, airy, convenient, easy stairs that are easy to find when that elevator is busy. In that same place, imagine that there are opportunities for, for interaction between older people who want to spend time with younger people and vice versa, younger people who want to spend time with older people and maybe help older people. But just an opportunity to interact between the ages. It is, it is something that is, is important to how we live our life and it's also important to, to a healthy lifestyle. In addition to that, imagine a place that is within walking distance of your home that is just a great party place. It's just a great place to go meet friends and go have a drink or do whatever you enjoy doing with your friends. Now my guess is that doesn't sound like your neighborhood. In most cases it doesn't. This year, the Urban Land Institute did a survey that found that 50% of the people in the survey did not have food or retail within walking distance of their home. And another 25% didn't even like going outside because they were concerned about the traffic and the implications of that. Last fact, in 1946, 60 years ago, the World Health Organization came up with this definition of health. A complete state of mental, physical, and social well-being not merely the absence of disease. What I want to talk to you about is a big idea that, that takes this idea of wellness and marries it with places, marries it with, with real estate, if you will. The real estate industry is not exactly a hotbed of innovation, and, and I can say that because I'm part of it. If developers had been in charge of the telephone, you can forget about the smartphone. We'd still be doing focus groups on the pros and cons of rotary dial. I promise you. But there is a big idea here, and, and I think it has three components. I'm going to talk through each one of these. The big idea starts with this idea of placemaking. That's a real estate term, and I'm going to explain it to you in a minute. The second layer is this idea of healthy living. And the third layer, which is the real payoff here, and I think the new part of the idea, is this idea of multi-generational living. So let's, let's talk about each one of them. Placemaking. Everybody in this room has had the experience of walking into a place. It could be your new friend's living room. It can be a restaurant they take you to. It can be a town. And you don't know why, but it just feels good. Your shoulders go down. You just, boy, this is great. I just love it here. That, ladies and gentlemen, is placemaking. It can happen at the city level. Two of my favorite examples are Asheville, North Carolina, and Boulder, Colorado. Close your eyes and think about them. Those are terrific places. It can happen at the neighborhood level. There's a place in Seattle called the Pike Place Market, which is a perfect example of that. At another extreme, very different, but also achieves the same goal, is South Beach in Miami. Those are examples of placemaking. I've been doing that for 45 years, and let me assure you, it's hard. It doesn't happen by accident, and there aren't very many examples of it. I've given you a few. The second criteria was healthy living. Now, health means different things to different people, and that's part of the key here. To some people, it means exercise. It can, mean, it can mean a yoga class, it can mean a spinning class, it can, be, it can be sort of conventional things. To other people, exercise could be going out and working in your garden. Or, or it could just be going for a walk with friends. It doesn't make any difference. The secret to this being an important part of a lifestyle is having all of those things available, having them all available in your neighborhood, and, and being able to enjoy them. It can also be just a social gathering with people where you get together and, and just enjoy each other's company. All those are definitions of healthy living. The last piece is this multi-generational idea, which I think is, the, is the, the new component here, and I'll explain that. We've come up with a new definition of, of generations, which gets away from the idea of age. Generation, Gen H, 
is a generation that looks at people who have a common lifestyle and have common things and interests and not are pigeonholed as millennials or baby boomers or X or Y. And, and I think this is an important part of, of how you think about it. As you get older, one of the fears is isolation. We obviously want to avoid that. Doesn't mean that you can't be alone if you want to. You can, part of just being relaxed is, is being alone. So that, that's fair. But you can also spend time with people. You can also just enjoy getting time together with people of different ages because that has its own value. We think that there's, there's the makings of an opportunity here. And we also think that it's an opportunity that the real estate industry has missed. But let me put it in a little context. Let me give you a little, a little history here. This is not my first rodeo. In, in 1990, I was in charge of real estate for the Walt Disney Company, and we got the idea that we wanted to build a new town uh, as part of Walt Disney World in Central Florida. So we went to Michael Eisner, who was the chairman of Disney at the time, and said, told him what we wanted to do. He had exactly the right response for a CEO. He said, look, we're an entertainment company. We're not a development company. So OK if you want to do it, but it's got to be interesting. It's got to be creative. It's got to be something that is consistent with the Disney brand. That was the right charge for a CEO, and thank God he did it. We got together, this was 1990, and spent time thinking about what we thought would be a cutting edge idea for then. We came up with two criteria. One was the place. It has to be a cool place. It has to be a place that feels good. But the second, in 1990, which in retrospect I'm kind of proud of, is we came up with healthy living as the other criteria that we thought was interesting. And health didn't have the presence that it has today. It didn't have 20 years, 25 years ago. So, so I think we were on the right track. So we set out to work. Placemaking was easy. Hey, we were Disney. We did Country Bear Jamboree, for God's sake. We knew, <laughs> we knew how to make a place. For healthy living, we went to the best hospital in Central Florida, convinced them of the power of our idea, and got them to build a 300,000 square foot medical office building in the middle of Celebration, which is the town we were creating. And we declared victory. And Celebration has been a terrific success and, and has worked over this, we opened in 94, so over uh, the 20 years. But there are, some, there are some lessons to be learned there that, that I think are important, and there are two that I want to I dwell on. One is technology. Think about technology in 1994 versus today. In today's world, you can't simply plop a building down in the middle of town and expect that it's going to have some kind of an impact. Today, you've got to connect it because we live in a connected world, whether it's YouTube or, or Twitter or, or just plain email or whatever it is, we are connected. That's a positive. That's a huge opportunity that we didn't have in 1994. So, so there's an opportunity to take this, take this influence and talk to the community. And one of the other things you realize is that talking to a 25-year-old is different than talking to a 70-year-old. To a 25-year-old, everything's an app. And there's a high probability that a 70-year-old might want a phone number or might want a counter where you could go actually talk to a human being. We've got to make sure that we adapt to whatever the communication style is of the people. But the second thing that's changed is, is I think, more dramatic. The second thing that's changed is me. I was 70 last week, and I'm working my way through that. But I've had this sort of year-long epiphany, if you will, about what it means to be 70. And what I've discovered is that being 70 in 2015 is not the same as it was being 70 in 1994. So the experience we had when Celebration opened and the people we were dealing with were very different. I have come to an aha moment. There is no way on God's green earth I am ever going to move into a senior living facility. And a 70-year-old 20 years ago in 1994 had that on the radar and was thinking about it. That just isn't going to happen. And what I've decided is I think there are millions of people like me who, who don't want to do that. And therein, I think, lies this community opportunity that, uh, that we're talking about. 
you know, I don't know what the psychology of this is. I don't know what the sociology of it is. I don't know how I got here. But the fact is uh, that I'm here. And my definition of healthy and fun is being with people of all ages and enjoying that, but being in a place that I'm comfortable with. So my partners and I have put together this idea. We're going to build, we're going to build a, a place that is truly a cool, interesting, fun place to live by any definition. We're going to create a healthy menu that will appeal to people of all ages. You'll be able to access it however you want to. And no matter what your definition of health is, you'll be able to exercise, do that within walking distance of your house. And the third criteria is that it will be multi-generational. It will be appealing to a 30-year-old because it's a cool place to live and because there are all kinds of healthy activities. And health, health is important to a 30-year-old just like it is to a 70-year-old. So it will appeal to everybody. And if we, if we create the place right, if we put the proper health menu in place, and if we then communicate it and market it properly, then we think we've got something that's interesting. And we think we've got something that literally will change the way people think about where they want to live. We're doing the prototype here in Jacksonville, and we're excited about it. I've described it as energy meets convenience meets healthy. We think it's a big idea. We think it's the future. Thank you.